Hi YouTube, I am back in the dorms. I am very sorry for not updating you guys very much over a break because I was very busy. And every time I tried to record, uh, something would come up and then I'd have to stop recording and delete it and whatever. Anyway, so from my previous video, I said I was going to learn how to install Scratch and use it, but it turns out it's already on the Raspberry Pi and the GUI. Um, but I'm not, I won't be using it because it's one of those visual programming um, IDEs, so I will be using Eclipse, possibly, because um, Magsor recommended NetBeans, and that was what I first learned on, but then I moved over to Eclipse because it was, you know, more features and stuff. So at home, I had some problems uh, connecting S to SSH on the Raspberry Pi because I had no Ethernet port in my room. And it's kind of a complicated story, but I basically couldn't use the Ethernet. So I tried using a... Uh, like a Ethernet bridge, I've tried Wi-Fi, but we're using like the Uverse, so it's kind of more complicated. I even got a Wi-Fi dongle. Let me try to find it. I got one of those Linksys Wi-Fi dongles, but that didn't even work because the I forgot what number it was like four something. Anyway, uh, that one was a Cisco. Yeah, it was using a Cisco chip, so wasn't very Linux friendly. I'd have to like write my own driver, which I don't have time for that. So now I am here at the dorms. Um, Dreamcast helped me out a lot. He uh, let me use his router to set up the Wi-Fi. And let's see, I connected um, to the Wi-Fi. I had to find my IP address. And then after trying to connect several times, it would change IP addresses. So then I had to make a static IP address. And that was kind of, it was complicated, but now that I know how to do it, it's pretty simple. <clears throat> and we also say choosing putty, which also my other group mate is using. And so when I got all that set up, we had to change some of the stuff in the configuration. We had to expand the file system because I guess by default, it was using only four gigs of my SD card when my SD card had 16. So we had to expand that. And also we uh, set up the configuration to boot to the command line instead of to the GUI, which is a lot faster to do it that way. And let's see, what else did I do? I uh, also had to download the Magzor libraries and the I2C stuff. And I set up the I2C for the LCD screen and I soldered it. And you guys will see it soon. This is the stuff that comes with the LCD screen, the 16 by 2 character LCD screen and the shield. And I'm gonna have to solder stuff. And here's the stuff. And up Apparently, I got the, it says over here, this is for the uh, LCD pie plate, but I got the uh, LCD shield, which is supposed to be for Arduinos. So I will figure out how to make it work for a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I put all the stuff in. These are resistors. It looks like 4.7K, 4.7K. And then red. I'm using red because it's, uh, you can't really see, but you see these lines over here? Ah, focus. Yeah, it's connected. And then none of the other ones are connected. So here there's buttons, like, you know, left, right, up, down, select. We're not going to use the reset button because Raspberry Pi doesn't really have one. It's more an Arduino thing. This is the IC, the I2C driver, and here's the potentiometer for... Uh, controlling the color, or the contrast, sorry. And then here is the LCD screen. Uh, Dreamcast um, tested, or solder tested, I guess you could call it. The header pins on it, just to, you know, test it, see if it, how it'll work. But yeah, it's just gonna go directly on. And now I'm going to solder it. Yay, okay. Silent Dreamcast so graciously allowed me to use his workstation. It's a very uh, resourceful workstation. Here we have a PC fan that is to suck the soldering air out. And then that, there's our window, blah, blah, blah. 
And then here is our overhead light, which is powered by Portobello, which is featured on one of his videos. So just take this over here and then put it in 12 volt. And then ta-da, there's our overhead light. <laughs> and here is our um, makeshift uh, anti-static wrist strap made from a slap bracelet. <laughs> so, and then here's our, uh, where is it? Where's the soldering iron? Okay. Oh, there it is. This is a stand for the light. Yes. Okay. And uh, soldering iron costs more than my laptop. <laughs> yes. So here is his very innovative workstation that he will let me use for now. Guys, all done soldering and testing. Um, I'd say the hardest thing to solder was probably the buttons because they like the pins are they come in at an angle. Oh, and getting this on was kind of a hassle too because it's a big IC and angled and stuff. Um, uh, let's see, we had to put tape where the resistors were. They were somewhere around here on top of the resistor to prevent scraping against the actual LCD screen, which is soldered onto here. Uh, it's actually, I don't know if you guys could see, but it's held up uh, by like stuff over here and then over here it's just held up by the resistors so that's why we put the tape on it okay and then it is connected over here to the mic the magzor mic i2c hub which goes on top of the raspberry pi it just stacks on there like the pins just go on there um and then after extensive frustrations and Lots of screaming and crying. I got the I2C detect to work. I had to like install the I2C tools first. And then there it is, uh, 0, 020. This is the address, uh, focus. This is the address of the LCD screen. And over here, we have Silent Dreamcast working on something. What you doing? Stuff. Stuff? Okay. Bye, guys.